sebagai pembicara ketiga, uh, we will have a world class speaker for the third uh, topics. We will invite Prof. In Ho Jeon from uh, Asan Hospital. As we know, he is a very well known and well experienced surgeon in the shoulder and especially in shoulder and elbow. Uh, at this moment, he is a president elect for the APOA, Hand and Upper Limb Society, and also a chairperson for SICOT Shoulder and Elbow Committee. If we see from his educational background, uh, he got uh, many fellow, especially for shoulder and elbow from Korea, UK, and Mayo Clinic. Uh, we hope that uh, we can uh, get uh, many information and uh, listen from Prof. In Ho Jeon about the arthroscopic in lateral epicondylitis. Uh, good evening, Prof. Are uh, you still muted, Prof? Hi, Dr. Okay. Eddie. Uh, thank uh, you very much. Can I start my screen? Yes, Prof. Uh, you can start your presentation, Prof. Okay. Uh, Dr. Teddy and uh, Professor Herma Wan, thank you very much for inviting me to your uh, excellent Indonesian Shoulder Elbow Society webinar. I am in Ho Jeon from South Korea, and this is where I am from. This is Asan Medical Center. Uh, my hospital is next to the Han River, and this is the place where uh, Dr. Iman Aminata and Dr. Erica Collin and myself shared our dream on shoulder and elbow surgery. So after Corona, hopefully we can get together to have a face-to-face -face meeting here in Asan Medical Center. So today, I'd like to talk about three important things. What we know about tennis elbow. What about the surgical technique of arthroscope? And what about the applica and snapping of the elbows? So what do we know about tennis elbow? Do you think we need a surgery for tennis elbow. I asked this question, many of my colleagues, shoulder and elbow surgeons, even though they had a lot of patient, a lot of surgeons, they have elbow pain, but none of them actually said yes. So basically what I would like to recommend you to remember in this talk is a six months. Usually within six months, 80% of our patients with lateral epicondylitis, they can resolve. The problem is a patient who's got a symptom over six months, they can be a chronic and only 15%, some of them, 15%, they can go until uh, two years. So if your patient comes to you with pain over six months, it's a kind of red flag sign. So what about the target pathology? Tennis elbow equals ECLB but sometimes common extensor tendon is also involved. So why we have so much a problem on ECLB specifically? It's because of the anatomic, uh, unique anatomic uh, insertion. But at the same time, let me have a quick review on lateral structure. So as you can see here, this is a uh, capitellum and this is a radial head. And we have uh, inner capsule, outer tendon, in between, we have a radial collateral ligament, okay? So we know the elbow is non-weight-bearing joint as like the uh, shoulder, but this is when you have your arm completely hanging. But when, if you like to lift anything side, this is not weight -bear, a non-weight-bearing joint anymore. You have a constant uh, stretching on the lateral side, and this may give a micro trauma to the common extensor tendon and causes this uh, lateral epicondylitis. So in my country, many, many people, they come to me with the MRI. We had a discussion in an APOA meeting just before. I'm not sure whether this MRI really helpful but at least the people are trying to figure out the relationship between the pain and this MRI findings. But so far, the consensus is there's no relationship with the MRI findings and the clinical symptoms. 
However, we uh, categorize some of these MRI findings, simple uh, tendinopathy, just signal change, and then torn ACLB outside and torn radial collateral ligament. It's the same as like our rotate cuff tendon pathology. So second is when you plan arthroscopic release, I want you to have three important concepts. One is a portal. The next one is what is the target tissue? Third, how can avoid the complications? So first, portal-wise, we have to know what the anatomy, you know, elbow, nobody like to put a scope in because of the radial nerve, because of brachial artery, because of median nerve. And this neurovascular structure gives a, a very complicated idea. So what we need is we need an anatomic idea from inside out rather than outside in. And our target structure is a capsule and ECLB. And the common complication of arthroscopic release is instability. Lateral or collateral ligament is often injured. So how we can avoid these complications, this is the most important picture I would like to share with you. When you have elbow 90 degree flexion, this is a lateral condyle and you have a radial head here. And this equator of radial head is important because the front of radial head, there is an ECLB tendon. Back of the radial head is where your ligament is. So there has been a study by Dr. Cohen in the States. And here you have a trapezoid insertion. But ECLB is always in the front half and the back of this half Posterior half is always for ligament. So when you put the scope or instrument in, always you have to keep in mind this anatomic structure. So now let's have a look how we do. Now we are doing uh, elbow surgery, right elbow 90 degree uh, flexion. So now I'm marking this lateral condyle with the radial head, and this is a lateral epicondyle. This would be a direct lateral portal, and this would be a proximal anterolateral lateral portal, and this will be soft spot portal. So we put the scope from proximal anterior medial, and then now you see my spinal needle is a direct lateral portal, exactly in an equator of a radial head. So why I prefer direct lateral portal than the proximal anterolateral lateral is e it's easier to control my shaver uh, to debride this ECLB tendon because we know this is the pathology here. So now you will see the water difference. This is direct lateral portal and I'm putting one more spinal needle from proximal anterior lateral. Then, you know, this is our target pathology and which one is easy to debride? Maybe this direct lateral portal is much easier to control your shaver. So uh, now let's say you put this uh, shaver exactly in the equator. And then first the structure you should divide is the capsule. Capsule, usually there's a separation between the capsule and the tendon. Once you debride this uh, capsule anterolateral, then you can see the white structure, the shining white structure of ECLB and common extense tendon. This is the tendon. So it is very advisable to debride the insertion of ECLB and common extense tendon released from the lateral epicondyle. During this procedure, always you have to keep in mind this front of radial head is the ECLB tendon. So you never go behind your direct lateral portal. Then you can preserve lateral or collateral ligament insertion. But of course, if you go a very high proximally here, epicondyle, you always have a risk to damage the collateral ligament insertion. Now, if you divide the ECLB tendon, now this red shiny muscle is ECLL. Always have to keep in mind, ECLL has a muscle insertion, ECLB is a tendon insertion with the common extensor. Now, I would like to share this one interesting lady. She 
came to my clinic with the painful snapping of a, a elbow. I wonder whether you can see it here. There's a snapping here. So during her pronation flexion, she feels a snapping. It was very painful. So when we did the ultrasonography, can you see some structure is engaging to the uh, radio capella joint? This uh, uh, hypoechoic structure, which is between the radial head and capitellum, is the pathology I would like to introduce you. So many of these patients who's got a painful snapping, if you scope them, usually this is the radial head. Yes, this is what happens. This is upper portion of annular ligament became very thick and fibrotic. And during flexion extension, this upper part becomes a snapping, making a sound and it's painful. So mostly these patients are very asymptomatic, but if it is symptomatic, usually they combine with the lateral condylitis. Then it's always advisable to debride upper part of annular ligament together with ECRB uh, tendon. So uh, this is the, what uh, Dr. Iman said, meniscal capsular complex. So this is a before surgery. You cannot see the uh, red, complete radial head, but after debridement, you can see the whole radial head is there. So you actually debride the upper part of the annular ligament, but somebody called it a meniscal capsular complex, but somebody called it it's a synovial fold. So synovial fold is like a meniscus in the knee. It is a circumferential structure embryologically, and then some of these uh, structures, uh, they remain and became symptomatic sometimes. So I would say this is a normal anatomic structure, but can be painful oftentimes. And if you look at the literature, 1955, Dr. David Boswas in the America, he published the same paper calling it auricular ligament. So he said, no, simple uh, ECLB release is not enough. You need to debride this orbicular ligament which is a synovial fold and upper part of annular ligament, same as a meniscal capsular complex as Dr. Iman said. So here's a, a one minor technical tip I would like to share with you. This is a 30 degree scope, same elbow, same portal, but if you put 70 degree scope, you actually can see a different view. Why? Because posterior or lateral part of the capsule, you actually can see better. So this is a 30 degree scope view, and this is 70 degree scope view. So you, if you like to access direct lateral and a bit more posterior, this is a 70 degree scope can give you a better view, which can be a, a minor technical tip. So when you see the capsular tear, capsule is kind of a capsular ligament, same as like your shoulder. If you have an anterior inferior glenohumeral ligament tear, your shoulder can be unstable. So this capsular tear is a sign of a radial collateral ligament tear, can be a various laxity. So we have seen, uh, analyzed the arthroscopic ECLB release and overall the clinical outcome here is quite good. So what is the difference? This is the capsular structure I would like to share. This is a capitellum and this is radial head. Can you see the small capsular defect and it's a scarred with the granulation tissue. This is maybe Dr. Yoyo said, uh, making uh, some uh, neuropathic pain, chronic neuropathic pain, because it's the same as like your frozen shoulder. When you have a capsular tear, it becomes a scarred. So in my idea, this is a spectrum of disease starting from tendinosis, partial tear and complete tear. So we look at this early stage, medial stage, compared to the late stage, grade three actually have a, a good result, but if you have a capsular tear, it's less a favorable outcome. So why? Why we have a less favorable outcome if you have a complete collateral ligament injuries? Because here we do simple ECLB release, but here if you do only simple release, 
maybe patient complain to you with a little bit of a various laxity, we can, which can make a symptomatic instability later on. So uh, maybe in this uh, torn radial collateral ligament situation, you may think about lateral, lateral plication or longer immobilization after surgery. So here's the final case I would like to share with you. This patient came to me with the uh, pain and the capsula tear. And after release, we tested whether this patient has uh, uh, laxity. And then this uh, radiography, see I'm imaging, show you a various laxity. And then here's how we do a capsule application. It's the same as like your uh, rotate interval closure. We pass this uh, PDS through this uh, posterior lat uh, soft spot portal and pass it through the epicondyle so that you actually imbricate this posterior lateral capsules. So uh, if you uh, finally tighten it, you, this is before application and after application, you can see the gap between the radio capella, it changes. So here I would like to summarize what we know about tennis elbow. Think about this, the six months can be a very critical uh, point when you uh, meet your patient. And if you are thinking about astroscopic technique, always think about this equator of a radial head the equator of a radial head is an important landmark so that you can know where is the ECLV, where is the collateral ligament. And third, plica is a very normal uh, anatomic structure. If it can be pathology with the painful snapping, you can treat it astroscopically open. So uh, uh, lastly, I would like to say thank you to Dr. Erica Collin for sharing her a long period of a fellowship program and research associate in Asa Medical Center. And it was an amazing experience for all. And she became a very, very uh, symbolic uh, icon in Asa Medical Center. Thank you.